Hey everyone, this is Julie Murphy, and we are starting part three of our fall table runner. What I want to do next is add leaves to our embroidery. Let me show you our fabric. Here is our fabric that we're gonna be adding some applique leaves and words into. So what I want to do is actually go back to the screen. Here we are back at the screen, and what we want to do next is actually go into embroidery. Once we're in embroidery, I have sent a design over from my computer, so I will select this button down here that shows it is from the computer. And this is the leaf that we're going to embroider in an applique fashion onto our runner. We are going to go ahead and set it. And there is our leaf. You'll notice over here the way I have got it, I've got a placement stitch. I've got an applique stitch which allows us to stop and cut after it and then we actually have the satin stitch. So before we get started what I would like to do is go into edit and I'm going to actually I'm going to put three leaves I've decided on my design so this button here allows us to make duplicates of our of whatever design we have on the screen. So there's a second one and a third one. Okay, now obviously I don't want my leaves to look like that, but I would like to kind of figure out how I would like them after I scan my fabric in. So before we go any further, we want to go up here to our scan button. It's the camera with the piece of fabric, and we're gonna scan in our fabric. We'll say okay. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is move our leaf on top of our little uh, X. You see the X right here? So then once it's up here, I want my two outer leaves going down, so I'm gonna rotate it, I think I'll rotate it left until it's facing down. This leaf, I want to move it and have it kind of, let's see, kind of in the middle, but facing up. And this last leaf, I'm also going to face it down. And let's see, let me look at this for just a second. And looking at the screen, I actually think I've decided I want to move this one just a bit. It's about right there. So all we did was touch and get the red box that was around it and use our buttons over here to rotate where we wanted them. Once we're happy with the placement and how we have everything laid out, we're gonna press embroidery. So here we are in the embroidery screen and you'll notice that we have our placement stitch, our tack down, and then our applique and it just repeats for all three leaves. It is tempting to go into our edit screen and combine our colors using the, the threads where we can combine so that they look like this. Here's the thing. These will work for our placement stitches, but when we move to the uh, tack down, even though it has scissors at the end of it, um, it recognizes it as all being the same trimming. Um, so I would actually say that we probably need to leave the appliques in individual format by, even though this is tempting, I would go back and uncombine and leave them as this and just stitch out and trim, uh, stitch out, place, trim each individual leaf. Here we are at the fabric and the first thing we're going to do is do our placement stitches. You can see where my machine has moved um, for this first, it's actually gonna do this bottom leaf first. So that's the first piece of fabric we need to place. The fabric is placed and we're ready to lower the presser foot and tack it down. There's our first leaf placed and tacked down, ironed, and ready for the applique. Okay, we've embroidered our first two leaves. They are already appliqued and now we've done our placement stitch for our third leaf and we are ready to tack it down 
and keep going. We've now finished appliquing all three of our leaves onto the green portion of our runner. And I wanna take you back to the screen and show you what we can do next. We're back at the screen and I'm ready to go ahead and add the words and another little design to our runner. I could have kind of worked with the scan I already had and the embroidery, but I really would like to start with a fresh scan so that I have everything placed where it needs to be. So first thing I'm gonna do is pull up my design. It's this little pumpkin right here. And I will set it. And the next thing I'm gonna do now that I have my little pumpkin is I'm gonna go ahead and scan my fabric in that now has my applique so I know where to place everything. So I'll touch the camera with the fabric and say okay. There's our little pumpkin. So what I'm gonna do is go into edit and drag my little pumpkin over. So I'll go into edit and rotate and we're gonna turn them 90 degrees to the right so I can kind of figure out where I would like to place them. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. And before I go any, I can go ahead and stitch out at this point, but I'd like to actually add a word up here on this dash and a, another word down here. So I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna to touch add. And I'm gonna go into the letters over here and I'm gonna use number two. I wanna type out the word pumpkins. So I've selected the letter P. I'm gonna reduce it to medium. And then I'm gonna take lowercase. Okay, and there's our word pumpkins. I'm gonna go ahead and set it. You always want to check your spelling because it's really easy typing it out to get the wrong spelling. And we'll set it. And you'll see that we really can't even see it. Here is the green and the orange and the black of our pumpkins. So what we're going to do is change the word pumpkins to a different thread color. We want to choose something that's different than the pumpkin that's already on the screen. So let's choose that one. It's number 1187. And we'll say OK. And what we want to do next is go into Edit. And we have this little arrow down here. So we're going to ch uh, choose the arrow. And we want to do our word pumpkins as an array. And what that does is it allows us to put it on an angle. It allows us to bend it, make it in a circle. We're going to choose to have it go up around the leaf. So there is one. What we're going to do is choose that and it starts to wrap it. This one pushes the line out and this wraps our line in. So now that we've got it semi wrapped, we want to come up here and we want to rotate it so that we make sure that we have it in the right area. You can see that we probably need to wrap it just a little bit more. We'll go back into edit. We'll go to the arrow, go back to our array. A little too tight. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I want to add one more word over on this side. So we'll go back to our letters and we will select add. And I'll choose number two for letters. And I'm gonna choose number two again. And I'm gonna choose the letter F and make it a medium. And then lowercase and we will set it. And again, we can't see it, so we know we need to go in and select the color. And let's choose a color we haven't already used before. And that should work. So now we're gonna drag it. Actually, we need to go into Edit. And once we're in Edit, we can drag the word over. And before I rotate it, I actually want to go back into Edit 
and I want to go down to the arrow and I'm going to choose Array and this time I'm going to actually put it on an angle and that is not the direction I want it to go. I actually want the F to be on top going stair step down to ALL. So what we'll do is use this key here and I'll just hold it down as I'm as you can see the letters are moving. So now I'm going to drag it over just a bit and now I want to see what it looks like. I'm going to say OK and then I'm going to use my arrow here and go back and rotate. I think that looks pretty good. Um, once you're happy with the pumpkin, the word pumpkins, and the word fall, uh, you're ready to start stitching. So if everything is placed, you know, our, our applique is already there. This is just our background. The things that we're getting ready to stitch are the pumpkin, which is what we added first, the word pumpkins, and then the word fall. So we'll answer OK, and we'll go to embroidery. And there we are, ready to start stitching out. So the very first thing it's going to do, now I see that we've actually got the word fall. Uh, let me go return. Let me talk, show you what I was getting ready to do. So it turns out with the pumpkin, we have the number 1177 chosen. Even though these aren't the colors that we're using, we still would, I would prefer them to be different as we cycle through these colors. So I'm gonna go in and do return. Fall still has the red box around it, so I'm gonna go in and change the color of that. And I think I'm gonna change that one to a light blue. Obviously, we're not putting light blue on our fall runner, but it'll make it so that the threads show up differently. So now we're ready to embroider. And now we know as we cycle through these colors, it's showing us that we're going to do the stem of the pumpkin first, then the body of the pumpkin, then the outline, then the word pumpkins, and then our fall. Now we're ready to move back over to our fabric and start stitching. And there we go. The word pumpkins is wrapped around the leaf, the pumpkin is above the middle leaf, and fall is on the end. At this point, I'm ready to take everything off and put the binding on, but as I look at it, I have decided I think I would like to actually add possibly just um, a leaf vein in the middle of each of the leaves. Let me show you how I'm going to do that. Back at the screen, I'm actually going to go into my design center. And because I want to add veins to the leaves and I don't want to do any other lines on my runner, I'm going to go up here and do the scan that has the little flowers and the blue arrow, not the line or the illustration, just a regular scan. There is my background image after I have rescanned in the fabric. It allows me to um, it, remember the light flower with the dark green removes our background so that all we see are our stitch lines, which we don't have any, and the dark flower with the light green allows us to darken our background. At this point, I would like to zoom in on the upper leaf um, because that's the thread color I have loaded right now. So I'm gonna zoom in and let me see if that's too close. We're gonna zoom in 200 and I'm gonna move my viewing window up here so that I only have just the upper leaf uh, positioned. We're gonna go into our line property area on the notepad and we are going to choose, we can either draw it as an open um, segment or we can use our, what we used before is our boundary points. Um, for this, because I only want to use um, the single stitch, not the bean stitch. The bean stitch, the problem with drawing this the way that we're gonna do it is if we did bean stitch, it would give us a lot of working um, back in the same place. So let's go ahead and choose the point to point and we'll choose the single stitch and 
And let's use a color that we can easily see on the screen. Let's go with this blue, bluish purple, and say OK. Now what we want to do is instead of using the bucket, we actually want to have our little point-to-point -point chosen. And we're going to draw um, our segments on the leaf itself. And for this, I am going to zoom in just a bit and move my viewing window. So what I'm going to do is start placing points on my leaf as I go across the screen. There's our first one. And you'll notice we have the lines drawn with that. I'm just going to And what we want to do as we go back is stay on top of the line that we just did. Now that one I'm not happy with, so I'm going to do my undo down here. Still not happy with it. Okay, so there is our leaf veining, and you want to take your time doing this because um, we're trying to get our stitches to go right back on top of each other, which will give us a beaning look, and we'll be able to save this and use it on all the leaves and just change the thread color as we stitch them out. Once we're happy with it, we will zoom back out and we will say next and we will preview it and before we go any further I am going to save it into my pocket down here now this is the pocket within the design center and I will set it and say OK and now we are in embroidery and I am ready to embroider. And before I go any further in this, I want to save this design so I can use it on all six leaves, the three on each end. And this is the pocket in the embroidery screen. And we are ready to stitch. Back at the screen, we do have um, our pattern, but we don't have our leaves on the screen. One thing we can do is go back in, since we haven't changed our fabric in the hoop, we can go back to our note, well, first we have to answer okay. And we're gonna go back to our notepad. This is the one in the embroidery screen. And we can go to page nine. And 
our background image is still sitting there from back when we did the pumpkin and the word pumpkin in fall. And you can see that we can either delete it and rescan our fabric, or since it is currently off, we can turn it on and say OK and go back to our actual screen. Now you'll notice that the pumpkin and the word pumpkins and fall are not here on the screen, but the reason for that is because we did this scan before we did those embroidered um, aspects of our runner. But our, our fabric is exactly the same and you can actually see the blue on top of our fabric, our fabric leaf uh, here at the top. So now what we want to do is take our blue um, veining and bring it down here to this leaf. Now obviously it's not going the right direction, but we can say edit and rotate. And we know we want to rotate it at least 90 degrees. There we go, it's rotated 180 degrees. And we just want to drag it into position here on this leaf. That looks pretty good. I'm ready to stitch it out. I do need to change the thread color before I start. The second one has stitched out, so we're ready to return and move it to our next position. And obviously we need to bring the background back in, so we need to go up here to Notepad and go to page nine, turn it back on, turn the background back on and say, okay, there's our background and we are ready to just drag this down to this leaf and now we need to go into rotate that looks pretty good so i'm going to change out my thread i'm going to answer okay i'm going to go to embroidery and we're going to go ahead and change the thread and stitch it out there are finished veining on the leaves and i'm real happy with how they turned out and now what I'm going to do is go to the, I'm going to reposition my fabric and go to the other end and add the veining on the other end of the runner and um, rescan in the fabric. We're now at the other end of the runner and ready to add the veining. And let's get back to the screen. This time we don't want to just go up to the notepad and pull in what was scanned because now we've actually got the fabric different on our screen. So we want to go back up to our camera and fabric and rescan in our background. So we'll say OK. Our new background has been loaded. In order to see our blue veining this time, I think I'm going to change the thread color. So we will tap it. And I think I'm going to change it to a yellow. And that makes it a little bit easier to see. We'll say OK. And now I'm just going to reposition it for each one as we go along and do exactly like we did on the other end. Now remember, after each one, um, just the design is gonna be sitting there. So before we go and stitch it again, we wanna go up to the notepad and turn, go to page nine and turn the background image back on. And this time for the other two leaves, I can still use the background image that was originally scanned and just move up what we want to actually, um, the actual veining. We'll go back into edit and get it all rotated and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it out. One thing I wanted you to see is the reason we did the single stitch is when you look at this leaf, it actually looks like a bean stitch because we had the thread stitching back over itself as we went up and came back down when we were first laying out the veining of the leaf. If I had done a bean stitch, it would have been binding up because there would have been so much stitching and wouldn't look natural. So that's why we did that. The runner's done and I've gotten the binding on and everything's all, it's been pressed and it's ready to give to a friend. Thanks for watching.